now we have a second speaker. And really happy to tell you the name. Uh, this is our one of the most experienced delivery directors at SoftServe. It's Igor Matrofailo. He has tons of experience in delivery, and today uh, he will share with us uh, some insights uh, about importance of innovation and personal brand uh, for project manager in the daily life. So, Igor, uh, welcome to the conference. Thank you, Dendir. Thanks for the for the introduction. Uh, this is very big pleasure for me, you know, to have such interaction with our audience on that side of, of the of the screen. And uh, yeah, today we're going to speak about a different perspective of the project management. We will be speaking about the personal brand. We will be speaking about innovation and we will be touch base on how these things overlap with the project management discipline. It's awesome. Uh, sounds really, really exciting. So the stage is yours, Igor. Please go ahead. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. So, you know, uh, just to make a refresh, just to make a warm up, I've prepared a small exercise where we're going to start. And um, this is something that uh, I would expect you to answer in the chat, but take into account that there's like some delay from our YouTube streaming. It's about like 10, 15 seconds. So I will be expecting that you will be answering on the chat and we will have some of the other interactions throughout our talk. And this is the first one. This is, uh, I'm really wondering uh, how many social messengers or social networks you interacted since this morning. So put your answer in the chat, put your answer in the YouTube um, conversation. I will be checking the, your answers. Yeah, I see people start texting something, start typing something. Okay, I see we have some delays and um, I will move forward. So for sure one, for sure one, this is a YouTube and this is where we are interacting uh, today with you at the moment. Yeah, I see people put three plus and yeah, only YouTube. Yeah, exactly. YouTube, this is something that we are talking about right now. We're interacting through YouTube channel. Yeah, more and more answers are coming in the chat. You can see it's three plus, three plus. Uh, for sure, uh, even now, I think uh, some of you interacting even with multiple channels while listening to me on the YouTube, you are sitting in your mobile phone or Instagram, liking photos, texting, via Viber or doing chats in the Telegram. And this is fine. This is new normal. This is how our reality look like, how we spend time mostly of our day online. And uh, if you look on the statistics, it says so on average, every person spent about seven plus hours every day, working day online. And it's fine. So the, the, the amount of uh, media, the amount of information that are appearing in the internet are growing very rapidly, very rapidly. So, and you know, 20 years back, it was uh, only a few sources of information. And these days there are like a lot of channels, a lot of interactions, a lot of uh, places where you can take the source where you can read about something new, where you can take news. So this is have a very rapid and very rapid growth and it is continually growing. Back in the days, like 15 years back, 20 years back, there were like almost no competition. You was fine like to kick off new company and be like another software company or you can kick off new product and be another product. It was fine or you start your online business and it was fine that it will be another online business in the internet. But these days, there's like a, quite a very big competition. These days, they're like a new reality. This is a new normal, a new rules in this reality. And if you compare this competition online, if you compare this competition that we have in the industry with sport, there's like certain certain connections, certain dots, certain common dots. So in sports, you can do trainings, you can do proper diet, you can do 
proper preparation to the your Olympic Games and the only like person who winning the Olympic Games is the person who make a last strong push, who make a extra effort to win this to win this competition. And I call it like a different zone. So this is something what other um, competitors doing to win the competition. So they are like sitting in a different zone. And here's another example of the of the different zone. The the a new TV show on Netflix. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you saw this uh, TV show on Netflix, The Queen's Gambit. And uh, the main character of this TV show, the lady, she did a different play. She did a different approach to win the chess game. So she was used her different dawn. She was in her different dawn, where she like think about the chess game in her mind before like real play and this was her competitive edge this was her competitive advantage in the in the in this in this in this tv show so and where is the different zone in uh, today's project manager's life where is the different zone in uh, today's reality in our it industry in our work so i've decided like to visualize this like uh, three components so the first this is a uh, Foundation, this is our traditional project management. This is what we are doing and our colleagues doing every day. This is typical things that we know very well. And uh, there is like coming another layer. They're coming a uh, personal brand. This is how us treat other people, how we, how other people look on us. So this is another component that are really important in our new reality and really important to make us in a competitive edge. And there's like a third component, the innovation, the entrepreneurship. So this is something that we're doing in a very different way. This is something that we're doing in a way that no other are doing to, to make the something new, to make uh, the difference in the, in a game. So, and overlap of these three components giving us a different zone, giving us a different zone. And today I want to dedicate a time where we can speak about in practice with real examples about personal brand. And also we're going to speak a bit and with real examples about innovation. So let's start with the personal brand and let's start with the uh, well-known uh, message of Jeff Bezos. And uh, when I see this message, when I see his quote about personal brand, it reminded me like uh, 20 plus years ago when you visited school, it, you, you, you usually can hear, hey, Petro is doing very good in chemistry or Anya, she is doing very perfect in, in Ukrainian literature. So at the time, it's like, it was like a, a, a text tags that were used to, to, to promote someone in front of others. So, or even these days you gathering in the room and you discussing, hey, uh, Michael, he did like a very fantastic job during this uh, weekend. He's, he ran an extra mile to save our project and we made a successful release. So this is, this is a way uh, how it looks like uh, today. And you know, the, the, the personal brand is about you. It's about what's, what people speaking about you when you're not in the room. Think about this. Think about this. And uh, while you're thinking about this, I'd like to play with you uh, uh, a small game. So I will be showing you different uh, images from the well-known commercials in the internet. And I will be asking you what first comes to your mind when you see the, the image on the screen? So we have some delay in the, in the YouTube streaming, but uh, hopefully I will, I will see answers soon in the chat. And here's the first image, the, you know, this uh, festive atmosphere, the red cars with the light bulbs on it, kids, uh, families. So what first thing that comes to your mind when you see, when you see this, this, this image, when you see this photo? Put your answers in the chat. 
put your thoughts in the chat. Yeah, yeah, people start putting Christmas, Christmas, Coke, the United States, you're right, you're absolutely right. This image usually associates us with the, with the Coke as a brand. Uh, let's move on with the next, let's move on with the next image. And uh, this is another well-known image. This is another well-known photo. And what, what come to your, to your mind when you see this series of images? What uh, come to your mind when you see this, uh, this illustration? So this is another well-known commercial in the internet. Um, I give you a tip. So this commercial from 1984, quite old one, commercial. Yeah, I see previous answer. You're putting the answer from the previous, from the Coke here. And this one is about Apple. Right, right. This is this is Apple. This is Apple company. This is exactly that association we, we, we have when you when we see this commercial, when you see these images in the internet. So look 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 moving moving forward. I will I will support you with with answers. So this is another this is another photo series of photos I've selected for this exercise. What uh, what things came to your mind when you see this sport ladies? When you see uh, the logo, you can't. Stop sport. You, when you see these dynamics, so I'm trying to comment on the image while we have this uh, delay with YouTube streaming. Okay. Nike, Nike, right? You perfect. You you getting you getting good. You see you see half half the have the images impact your answers. You see this connection. So personal brand is not only about, you know, the, the, the action. This is about, not about the mechanic. This is about emotions. This is about the feelings. This is about what sits on top of your mind when you, when you see some of the signals, either like image, either sound, either interaction, either part of the experience you're having. So this one, another interesting with uh, Van Damme, so this was a uh, quite famous meme in the internet, like for, for, the, for the last uh, decade. Volvo, right, right, Tolik, you're absolutely right. This is Volvo. Uh, and the last one, this one is, uh, I like it very much. This one is funny. So I've, I've uh, selected this to have some little bit fun. You see, you see this, this emotion, this good memories, these good things that happening when you see these photos, when you see these associations. I see Volvo was most memorable, most like uh, well recognizable uh, commercial that you guess. Okay, this one. Yeah, again, right. Old Spice. This is Old Spice. You're right. So. Uh, you see this small, small exercise we did, like showcases how the brand impact our mindset. How you associate something, you associate experience, you associate uh, some feelings with the brand. Same here with, with the people. So if you're talking, we are working in IT industry, we are working with the client, with the big companies. It doesn't mean that we are working in B2B or B2C. We're still working with people. We're interacting with people. We're communicating with people. We're talking to people. And we have these associations to people. So we're thinking about someone when we need some expertise. And this is like link us to a certain person. Hey, I know, I know this data science expert in my group. So Alex, he's the best guy, so I'm gonna reach him. So this is a connection that we have. And this is how our mind work when we making this connection. And like it you or you don't like it everyone is a brand everyone is a certain representation of uh, qualities in front of others each of you is a brand 
You can develop this brand or you can stop where you are. Today we will be speaking a little bit about how you can develop your personal brand, how you can improve your network around your brand, what channels you're going to use. So if you look uh, into the development process of the personal brand, it will show you the, the certain paradigm. So the, the left side, the red one, is what you see in your mirror every morning. This is how you see you, how you think about you. And the blue side is about how others see you. And usually this is very interesting insight when you're trying to overlap these two things and when you're trying to get and ask the feedback about you, they ask about insight, what are the, talking, what are the people talking about you? And sometimes this is very contradictive from, from what you're thinking about yourself. And this is a personal brand. And this is a personal brand and this is the way how people perceive you. And um, now let me uh, turn another small game that I want to play with you. And uh, again, please use chat in a YouTube, uh, put your answer here. And uh, now I've put some of the uh, quite known personalities in our industry. So the people who do project management, who do consultancy, who do agile, who do a lot of other stuff in their industry. And I'm wondering if you could put comments in the chat and think about what first came to your mind when you see those portraits, when you see those personalities. PM. So people start putting PM, project management. What else? What else you link these people. This is quite known. There are like people from Lviv, from Kyiv, from other um, geos. Agile. Courses. Agile coach. Software PMs. PMO experts. Right, right. So these people contributing a lot in their industry. These people doing a lot in their industries. And this is a way how they build their personality, how they build their personal brand. Yeah, you like LinkedIn training, Scrum Agile, how they build their personal brand around them. And uh, moving forward and think about your personal brand. Think about who is your target audience. Think about who surrounds you within your company, your colleagues. Who surrounds you within your uh, public conversation in your public network. Who surrounds you from the client side. So this is the area, this is your area of interest, this is your area of the surrounding where you can build your personal brand, where you can uh, change the perspective on what others are thinking about you. And uh, I also prepared another good example. Uh, I will be speaking about Denise. So I use him as, a, as an example of good representation of the personal brand in the social media. And you see this is a how the page of Denise looks like on Facebook. And uh, I just randomly make this screenshot and luckily I've captured one very interesting message. So I, I will read it out loud. Чи натрапляв хтось з вас, друзі, на гідний курс для п'ємів початківців? Не початківців. Знаю про ліст, а Денис Прилуцький. So what does it mean? So person who like shared this post in the Facebook, in the internet, already connected. Hey, I need advanced courses of project management. And this is Denise. So this, this connection happened. So this is Denise, how he promote him as a personal brand in the social media. Like looking forward, he also supporting his track in the professional network on LinkedIn, where we interacting with his clients, with the soft service company he working at on the LinkedIn profile. Another thing, Denise's uh, school of project management, this is his area of passion, of interest, but this is another flavor of Denise where he talking to public media, to social media about him as a personal brand. Moving forward, this is a, a recent video Denise did uh, in uh, Instagram, where he like answered in, a, in front of a thousand audience on the, some interesting questions about project management recently. You can, you can watch it in the, in the Instagram. Of course, YouTube. YouTube, this is another powerful channel, and I would say, 
podcasting, video blogging, audio blogging. This is like another niche, another modern trend where people and experts uh, come in and using this uh, platform to promote them as a personality, as a personal brand in the, in the media. And of course, there's like another side of the NIS. If you look on the NIS from the private side, this is about his passion about traveling in Ukraine. So Denis spent like uh, all the time during the COVID period uh, traveling during the weekends on the different places of Ukraine and make uh, photo shoots, make uh, nice stories about this trip. So this is something that you can text Denis on Instagram or on Facebook, ask him about advice. And for sure, he can tell you very good stories and give you some uh, support in building your uh, trip in the, in the good and very nice places of our country. So this is about the personal brand. This is about practical example of the person who developing the, him, his personal brands through different media. So think about it. Think about you. Think about your surrounding. Think about your channels and where you want to step in to develop your personal brand. And you know, uh, talking about personal brand, this is not like one-time action. Hey, I met a, a very nice photo shoot, so I updated my photo profiles, so I put some sweet posts in the internet, I'm done. So everyone now associate me with the <clears throat> project manager, with a high-class project manager, or with a very good data science expert or DevOps, whatever, uh, in the industry. So this is a continuous work. This is like a very tough thing and you need to be on top of all the trends. You need to be on top of all the flavors of information that are coming in the industry, that are coming in the, in the public internet. And the good example of the guy who like tracking this trend, the good example of the, of the guy who adopting to this trend is Gary V. He's an ex-Soviet guy who moved with his family to the United States. First in a year, he supported his father develop the wine store and he used uh, YouTube and online as a channel to promote the wine store, the, the different uh, flavors of wines. He made some classes, he made some videos. Uh, and now Gary these days is a very provocative and very public figure in the public internet, on Instagram, on TikTok, on other medias. He has his own media uh, uh, company where he's supporting other to do production of other, uh, 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 other products in the, in the internet. And adoption, what does it mean adoption? What does it mean this, this, this adoption for the personal brand? Of course, it's think, looking for signals. COVID, work from home. This is a very bold signal that are coming these days, these months. So this is how we are adopting and moving our life from offline mode to online mode. How we interacting online, how we changing our mindset about the online. Of course, this is a social media channels, the TikTok, the Clubhouse. So I've, I've reading a lot and now TikTok is not only the platform for fun, this is also a platform for education. As Renata mentioned in her previous post, uh, on, on, on her, on, in her speech, that people are looking for something very dense, very small, very informative and insightful. So they are looking like 5-10 minutes speech, 5-10 minutes piece of information, and TikTok, this is a very good platform that people are trying to use to promote themselves, to promote their brand, to promote their educational materials in a short, small, very interactive and insightful videos. Of course, this is a uh, demographics. This is a... Uh, sorry, switch to... Of course, this is a demographic. This is a uh, generations uh, that, uh, of people that are... We, we're dealing with them every day, Generation Z, Generation Alpha coming. So this is a different mindset of people, the, the, the people with different values. And this is something that also we need to think about when we're developing our personal brand and when we're thinking about our target audience. And culture, of course. We're working in a multi multicultural environment. So today I'm working and have a call with my colleagues from United States. Tomorrow I'm going to have a call with my uh, client from London office and in a week I'm traveling to Qatar to meet my another partner uh, in Qatar office. So this is a multi-dimensional culture, this is a multi-culture environment and this is uh, how we need to adopt our brand to this environment. And there are only few examples of such 
you know, uh, changes of such reflection that are happening on the market. Of course, there are more. And, you know, um, to keep s working on your personal brand, again, this is not like a one-time action. This is a continuous work, very hard work, and I'm sure you can use it as a base to start your and rethink your perspectives of your personal brand and use this as a foundation for some of the actions that you're going to do in, a, in the following days. Next, and the more excited part that we're going to touch base and another perspective of project managers that we're going to talk about, this is uh, innovation. This is our internship approach of doing things in a different way, of doing different things. Of course, uh, you can think about innovation like uh, big wall things that happened during the last few decades in the world. And you're right, this is most memorable, this is most biggest innovation. They change our work life, they change our uh, things, they change our world and how we do things. Internet appeared, uh, uh, light appeared, uh, uh, airplanes, cars. So this is a set of you know, big innovations that have happened with us, with our world in the last uh, several decades. Of course, if you move down and and I like this example very much. And we think about the innovation from uh, the commercial and production perspective. So I'd like to uh, give you an example as, uh, as a strong example of innovation as Amazon as a company who developed throughout the years and Jeff who made some very different decisions throughout this time. And usually there were like no like a straight line from A to B of these decisions. There were like a lot of fails, there were a lot of gaps in this, on this way, but overall the, and the ultimate trend was very positive in the Amazon as a company. So let's look on this, on this innovation as an example in a historical timeline. So when Jeff started uh, his online store only selling books and at the time it was Barnes and Nobles and other big companies who sell books uh, offline. And they decided, hey, I want to try it online. I want to try on a small group of products and it will be books. And it was a very successful move. And as Jeff made a hypothesis, hey, we're doing a lot of uh, stuff internally. We're supporting our online store using our infrastructure capabilities. What if we scale it on the public? What if we give this opportunity to other online stores to build their uh, businesses on top of our infrastructure? So this was another bold move of Amazon and, and they enabled AWS as a services. Another paradigm, another experiment that they decided to launch, they tried to, you know, the Kindle Fire, the book, they tried to, to convert paper experience to e-experience and give this uh, hardware as a device for this experience. It was another very successful example of, of Amazon uh, hypothesis that they created. Afterwards, there were like uh, a certain uh, seven years life of the Q&A platform, something similar to Quora that we have today's, today, but this was a gamified experience for users who read the answer and for other users who put the, read the questions and other users who put the answers. And you know, it failed. It was a disaster. It failed. After seven years, they decided to close this program, to close this product. Again, Jeff decided to move on and they launched another series of uh, innovations, another series of hypotheses. They, they launched a prime. It was a big experiment, a standalone area where they tried to play with it, where it, they tried to set some of the expectations for the prime experience back in 2013. And uh, these days, what they're doing, I've read recently an article, they decided to move this experience into regular Amazon no any more prime experience like a standalone experience they decided to move prime experience to the broad all amazon audience i think this is a very nice move and this is an example of how you like playing with a hypothesis how you playing with the experiments and doing a bold moves afterwards uh, and again i, I in, intentionally put washington post here so this is not like a part of amazon journey but this is part of jeff bezos journey where he purchased um, Washington Post as another source of information. So as I mentioned in the very beginning, information is a power. Like, like a lot of media, a lot of things are happening and 
and there are a lot of channels and Jeff also want to be on top of this and he bought Washington Post as another source of putting his insights, putting his pieces of information to the public public network. Moving forward and, uh, and, uh, and uh, another success of Amazon, their mobile phone. It was a disaster. So they, they launched the, the, uh, the Amazon Fire Phone. It took like several months and they decided to close this program. Even they, they, they want to like sell it for 99 cents, but ultimately this was a big disaster. And there's like another funny experiment that Jeff did in the Amazon history. They launched their own line of diapers for babies and it, they closed this program after two months. So this is, uh, this is uh, a line, this is, you see, this is not a straight line of successes and failures, uh, of, of only successes. This is uh, like a line, as a curved line with the passes where we see all the fails on the way. But ultimately, the trend is showing if you're trying, you get, you're receiving a feedback from your target audience, from your market, from your colleagues, from your clients. You are adopting, you're improving, and you're moving forward, doing other experiments, doing other improvements. Who know who know this who know this uh, this image who know this popular uh, fake cemetery uh, that I'm showing on the screen and I sh I'm sure you recognize it uh, and there are like a couple of interesting products you can see you can see on this on this image Google Plus Google Bus Google Picasso. This is a famous uh, Google cemetery where they're using uh, uh, this artificial things to showcase their fails, their biggest fails in their, in their journey. And again, this is a, a good example of, uh, of the fails. And why I'm talking about fails? Because this is the only way how you can succeed, to try. And without trying, uh, this is not the way how you can succeed. Another big failure of the uh, modern world, and I know this guy, for sure, from the internet, from the books. This is Elon Musk. And this is his uh, journey of fails. This is his SpaceX uh, product that he uh, trying uh, year over year, that he playing with, that he wanna always improving. And this is a way how we moving to success. So moving forward and uh, looking on the innovation from another perspective, that, that on not, on not only big brands perspective, not only big production perspective. Let's look on the innovation from a very simple, very easy example from our day-to-day -day life. Let's look on the innovation from a perspective of the coffee shop. So I think each of you drinking a lot of coffee and we in IT industry, we do love coffee very much in the work, in the coffee shops. And uh, let's have a look on a small coffee shop we have in Lviv, this sweet cow coffee shop. And uh, the typical experience in the sweet cow coffee shop, what you do, you go, you buy a cappuccino or a latte or espresso, you're paying money for this, then this money coming to the cashier, they're putting this money together. And uh, at the very end of the month, uh, Mark Ian, this is uh, owner uh, of the coffee shop in Lviv, Mark Ian Bedri, I know this guy, uh, and uh, he's a very nice person. Um, he taking this money, he paying bills, he paying rents, he buying supplies, he do other spends, but he taking another piece of money and he do innovation. And what does it mean innovation for Markian for his sweet cow? He's traveling. He traveling a lot. He traveling to Ethiopia. He traveling to Tanzania. He traveling to Honduras. He traveling to Brazil. He traveling for experience. He traveling to try new sorts of beans. He traveling to try new sorts of flavors of coffee. He talking to people. He talking to people, understanding how they seeding coffee, how they harvesting uh, coffee beans. And he taking this experience with him back to Lviv. And whenever you come to Sweet Cow on Market Square, and please come if you've never been there, you can see a nice photos on the wall with, uh, with his trips. When you browse his Instagram, you can see a very nice pictures from his trips and where we put some of the description and the, and the stories behind these pictures. When you talk to barista while you're ordering a coffee, she can tell you a lot about uh, these beans where they harvest, how they brought to Ukraine and about the history of these beans. And I think this is a competitive edge of sweet cow. And I think this is very simple from one side, 
but very good from another side example of the innovation on, on, the, on, on it is. So moving forward uh, and talking about the culture. So innovation is not like uh, um, one, I get up in the morning, hey, I want to do innovation today. So no, this is not how it works. Innovation is a culture. Innovation is a experience, it's a type of thinking, it's a mindset. So you're thinking about it, hey, how I can improve the productivity on the certain project? Hey, how I can change the delivery model or how I, how I do some adjustment to our pricing offering when we're talking to new prospect? And of course, innovation and this, of course, this change bring values. So the values is about productivity, this values is about profitability, turnover, brand awareness, and in IT industry, this well-known values. And uh, innovation is overlap. This is overlap of these two things. And if you look uh, on, the, on the life cycle of the innovation, this is very, again, straightforward. You're coming from the pain of someone from your network, or you're coming from the gain that, that someone from your network uh, want to get. And you're thinking about this as an idea. Hey, I have an idea. And you know, for me, this is a, uh, a good uh, source of such ideas. This, uh, this is traveling, this is reading books, this is talking to people specifically not from IT. And you know, by the way, I'm, I have a, a non-IT business here in Lviv, and this is very helpful when you're interacting with people from non-IT industry, and we are capturing some of the very good insightful stories and where you want to apply the story then again on the IT industry. So find your source of hypothesis, find your source of ideas. And this is the very first step of, of to the innovation. The second step, this is experiments. Try to build some of the scenarios, some of the use cases. Hey, this is a way I want to test this idea. This is a way I want to test this hypothesis. Try to pick the scenarios in a, in, and measure them in a quality or quantity way. So you can check, hey, in a certain of time, this experiment succeed, this experiment failed. And in case of everything went well, you're coming to the innovation. So you're coming to this like gold bulb, the innovation. And again, innovation is not about uh, big uh, Amazon logos, big stories of Elon Musk, or good stories of Mark and Bidri. Innovation could be very small, very tiny steps. I definitely recommend you uh, to have a look to these books, to have a look to this course on Coursera. They're speaking about operational efficiency as a, as a niche and looking on your process efficiency and by improving uh, you know, team productivity, by justifying some of the uh, areas where you want to uh, have some added value. So this is your innovation. Look around you, look around your uh, project team, look around your clients, look around your colleagues. What experience are you providing? To them, what the way, how are you doing this? Probably there are like still could be tiny steps how you improve this, how you like empower it with new, new uh, ideas, with new um, uh, perspectives. So this is innovation you can do, and you can do it. You can try. You can do it uh, uh, on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. Think about this. So there shouldn't be any amazing that you like preparing first half a year and then you executing second half a year. This could be small tiny steps. And uh, I like uh, another good example of uh, this small innovation by, uh, by that Alej Harachowski introduced in his uh, YouTube uh, series of shows. Uh, he called them CEO for one day, where Alej uh, spent a day with the CEO of uh, big companies, uh, Ukrainian companies, and give them some of the advices of the innovations that they can introduce to enlarge their business, to improve their go-to-market strategy, to improve their sales channels, to whatever stuff. And he gave one of the examples. He was sitting uh, on one side of the table in the room with, uh, together with CEO of the company. And his, uh, he gave a direct call to the support, to the call center of this company. And uh, it took him a minute when he was connected to a real person on that side. And before that, he was like uh, redirected by robot, like press one and if you're looking for that, press two, if you're looking for that, press three, if you're looking for that, it took him a minute. And then he like made a summary. Hey guys, you're a company, you're a B2B, and you have only like hundreds of clients in your portfolio. Why are you doing this robot 
very experienced uh, on the line. You don't have like billions or millions of users. So, and he suggested like cut this robot off, just directly connect the customer with your person on that line on the call center. Because the person, while this minute happening, could cancel the call, could like turn it off, could like make a, another decision to call for another company for advice. So he, this, this uh, I fully recommend to have you a look to, to this series of small videos by Lech Horkowski. They're very insightful. They're very really simple for understanding. He's speaking very simple language. So you can took for you and probably you can even uh, reimagine some of his ideas and try to apply on your area of interest, try apply on your ecosystem where you're working at. There are like other set of examples that I've uh, collected, very linked to our industry, very really linked to, to IT. And uh, first, like and very like um, uh, visible in the industry nowadays specifically, this is a change in the organization structure. And this is change where we, where we reveal the, the value of uh, adding new uh, uh, talents by enabling, so, by enabling universities, by enabling academies. I know EPAM had their academy, SoftServe had their academy. There are other companies, big companies in Ukraine and globally have their academies and universities to enable new talents. To, and they finally ultimately bringing a value to the company in the way of revenue. So this is a very good example of such innovation. So 10, 15 years back, it was like innovation. And these days, this is a regular, this new, this is a regular normal we live in quiz and without which we can't like effectively uh, perform. Another good example, this is a um, GTO, global talent acquisition, and the area how we can improve lead revenue as a value. And the area how we like recruiting for the talent, how we are doing staffing, how we can improve our talent journey from one week, from two weeks to two days, or from two days to two hours. A lot of companies these days are thinking about this exercise, and a lot of companies are doing experiments. I know it's observed, you're doing several experiments, I know other companies doing several experiments to try this, this, this hypothesis, to try this new way of talent acquisition. Another good example, this is a turnover. Uh, and the way how companies trying to to accommodate this this challenge and to to address this uh, this uh, this uh, value, uh, I know Google, Adobe, all product companies already had this in their ecosystem as part of the uh, retention package. And I know our companies here in our network in our Ukrainian IT industry also trying to replicate this experience from big product companies and try to transform them to our realities. So this is another series of experiments that are running these days in our industry. I'm sure you will have your own experiments. I'm sure you have your own hypothesis. Think about them. Think about how this small change could bring the value. How you can experiment and trial this, this hypothesis within your environment, within your network of colleagues, of clients, of, co of, of public network. So this is really important. And finishing, uh, I want to stop on uh, and reiterate some important phrase. So when you're moving to success, when you like doing competition or when you're doing something, you're moving from A to B. And it's always uh, not an easy way when you're moving from A to B. It's always a way of complicated things about curly passes uh, with a lot of gaps, challenges, at the same time with a lot of opportunities. So try, try to do innovations, try to do the small experiments on the way. Try to think about you as a personal brand. Try to also revive this uh, inventory of, of your social media channels, of your communication channels with your colleagues, with your clients, with your network. Revisit this, look on this from different perspective. Try to experiment and uh, try with uh, different approaches. And uh, finally, I want to say, um, if you uh, not making decisions, uh, this is bad. So always make a decision and you always want decision back from a better, from a different life. So you always want decision back from a different life. Think about this, think about this, uh, this, uh, this hypothesis and uh, 
try to apply on your experience. So, and uh, thanks everyone for listening. And I'd like to move to the question here and uh, uh, ask Denise either like any questions in the chat. So probably we can interact uh, on the questions and uh, see how the how how the how the conversation overall. Thank you very much, Igor. It's awesome topics and uh, actually great insights. I even get got uh, just my personal one. So I should be a little bit more careful with my social network that I'm, it is fine. <laughs> I'm actively followed. Uh, so uh, yes, we have a lot of questions and uh, I've chosen three of them sure. as, as always. Uh, and then you will be asked to choose one of those three. So we will reward uh, the person who asked the question. Let me start from uh, interesting one. Uh, how to determine what you want to be known for? Very good question. Again, this is, this is uh, up to you. You can do the things that you don't like to do. First of all, think about what you love, what you like to do. And known for, this is like a result. This is like, a, not like a first action that you need to, you need to execute. This will be a result of your passion of your experience that you provide. Either you doing a product and you promoting this product on the broader audience and the experience you provide to the market. Or again, your experience with your colleagues, with your client, with your coworkers. As soon as you master it, as soon as you will be doing it with the passion, as soon as your audience, it doesn't mean like worldwide you should be well known. It could be only within your company, within your project or within your department. You know, you uh, uh, doing this with a passion, then everyone else using word of mouth will be talking about you. We'll be talking about you as an expert. We'll be talking about you as a personality who can provide a device, advice, who can provide the, the different experience than others. And then it will be your cutting cage in the, in the, in the personal brand. Great, thank you very much. Uh, we have next question. So, uh, do we have any borders between personal brand and private life? Uh, does private life has chances to live together with personal brand, especially if we develop the brand uh, to reach the target audience? This is another good question. And of course, this is up to you. I saw a lot of personal brands who even um, monetizing their private life. They showing their kids, wives, husbands, dogs. They using this like a little bit intimate in their personal brand, scandals, some wedding ceremonies, uh, other stuff to promote and monetize their personal brand. And of course, it's up to you. But the really important thing that you need to pay attention at, make sure that if you step into this game, if you start using this as a tool, your private life to promote your personal brand, make sure that everyone else will see it. Make sure that you will be on top of everyone's eye. As I did a quick research of Denise about his, his, his experience in the internet and about his personal brand. So make sure that millions of people will be looking on you and will be waiting from you these pieces of information, these pieces of private information. And uh, this is, again, this is up to you if, if you want to make this decision. I know the, the, good, the good example of uh, uh, other two personal brands that I see in our uh, network, in our media. This is uh, uh, Chris Kosick. So she's doing very good in her personal brand, in a professional life and a private life. Another good example, Dima Maliev. So he also did some very good and fundamental work around his personal brand. So you can take a look to the internet. You can see how others are doing these things. Uh, and then you can select for you what's work for you. And it will be your decision, only your decision. Great, thank you very much for this answer. Uh, and the last question for you uh, from our uh, viewers is, if you're talking about the start of pre and professional development, how much innovation should be there as opposite to working with best practices? Again, uh, innovation in, in a matter is a change. It's a change that drives certain value. And it could be a very small innovation. Let's say if you like compile a team, 
uh, port agile team to improve velocity on your project or you uh, introduce CI CD uh, practices on your project this is again for your environment for your ecosystem this is innovation that drive set and value because of you doing this change so as soon as you in the network as soon as you in this environment you will start feeling it you will start understanding hey I see an area of innovation I see a pos positive trend that I, if I do this way it might be a positive trend in a certain certain processes in certain behavior in certain experience so there's like no limit there are no like a certain set in stone rules how you can how you can uh, uh, do this and how you can measure it and it should be like 50 50 or 30 70 uh, for example good example of simple change that you can do in your uh, work experience in your professional experience as a project manager start adding people in your link in the network start to leverage link in the network you contacted a meeting with a client add to linkedin you met a new colleagues in your work environment add to linkedin then you can interact with people in a professional perspective by introducing some insights talking to these people in a professional way and again this shouldn't shouldn't be harm for you this shouldn't be like hey today first part of day i'm doing innovation and you locked your calendar for innovating it should be natural it should be organic it should be like part of your enjoyable work it should be part of your uh, life and you love to do these things and then it will be giving you a, a passion a good result and a good positive vibes for you and for your surroundings. Thank you very much, Igor. Uh, it's, it's really awesome. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing your experience and vision with us and our viewers today. And uh, it was a really pleasure to have you among our speakers.